Welcome back to Arise Prime Time, where we offer perspectives on the news and talking points of the day. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, day by day, we're inching closer to the latest battle in Nigeria's election wars, the court proceedings for the legal challenge against Bola Tinubu's election victory. It's a case that could at once set a locus classicus precedent in Nigeria and show the strength and independence of the legal system in this country, or it could go the other way. So, which end of the telescope will we be looking looking in. Well, in a country that is deeply polarized at the moment, some see a deep state conspiracy here and the politicization of the judicial system, while others see the strength of a new democracy that's being built. So at once jeopardy and opportunity. And this, along with all the other shenanigans from the current political space, including audio leaks of private conversations, alleged deep fake voice concoctions, the concept of freedom of expression, a warning against inviting insurrection, and a president-elect marching forth towards his inauguration. All these issues have been at the heart of our program today. And I have two guests with me for the rest of the show who will give us their thoughts and perspectives on the news and issues of the day. They are the current affairs analyst, professor of communications and deputy dean of the postgraduate school at Bayes University in Abuja, Professor Abiodun Adeniyi, and the journalist, political affairs commentator and a rise news analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. I'll start Thank with you, you Prof, because you haven't got any hair, and she has. <laughs> <laughs> but, but <laughs> I mean that respectfully, of course. But, but the, the, the point um, is that Akin Oshuntakun was speaking yeah. there for the Labour Party. Yeah. He seemed fairly confident that they were going into court. It was going to be coming up shortly mm. and that they were going to um, deliver a shocker in, mm. in that court uh, for, for all those who oppose their side of the argument. What do you make of what he had to say? Well, I thought that's an excellent um, route to take, and beyond that is um, the constitutionally permitted route, you know, which is resort to court, and that's the point um, the hierarchy of Labour Party um, have, have also made severally that they are headed for the courts, and we have seen their points, we have seen their arguments, we have seen the, the, their legal um, assemblage, we've seen their readiness, and of mm. course, even the presidential candidate said as much this evening, you know, that um, he has nothing else, no, no other route to take but to rely on, on the courts. And they are very hopeful, like uh, we are all watching, they are very hopeful that they are going to get justice. And that's the essence of actually um, going to court. And mm. do not forget that going to court is also, it's been said to also be um, one of the stages of the democratic process, of the electoral process. You know, a post-election stage that allows uh, part um, participants, you know, contestants to ventilate, you know, and in doing so, somehow, they end up uh, strengthening or deepening our jurisdiction, as the case could be. Mm. And of course, it's a panacea to crisis, you know, to taking laws into your hands, you know, because um, we have people who are there, you know, who've been there for years, they are experienced, you know, they are men of wisdom, and we trust that at the end of the day, justice will be served. Mm. Good point. And um, mm. Dr. Constance Ikoku, one of the things he touched on, perhaps peripherally, not directly, was the topical issue today in Nigeria, the question of freedom of expression, which is always more meaningful during and after an election in Nigeria. We've seen warnings against incitement and accusations of treason because a candidate who lost feels strongly that the declared winner didn't actually win. I mean, we've seen news organizations being fined for airing the views of those losing candidates. How do you differentiate um, between officially sanctioned suppression of the freedom of speech, sensationalization, and putting your message across with proper force? Well, that's a heavy loaded question, mm -hmm. uh, multi-pronged. We have been in this country for many years facing great opposition from the government, opposition to the media. So it's, um, it's a difficult job working as a journalist and trying to have the balancing act of reporting properly what is going on and having a hammer literally on your head trying to knock you out of consciousness because politicians mm -hmm. feel that they are not getting the kind of news that they want and yet they say 
they want a democracy. In a democracy, there should be freedom of expression. Absolutely. The press should be allowed to report. Um, during the elections, there were journalists that were arrested, they were battered, they had to go to hospital, and that is not what should be happening in a democracy. So everybody should be able, apart from the media, the general public should be able to also say what they need to say, although sensationalism should not be encouraged. There's also a responsibility that comes with that freedom of expression. Mm, absolutely. You do not want to cook up stories and put it out there, especially in these days of social media. If you have been following the conversation, especially in the social media space, particularly on Twitter, the level of savagery that is unleashed on people between parties, you know, supporters on both sides, it's frightening. Mm. And you begin it's a very difficult space to control. It, it is. It is not. It's media. not for the faint-hearted. Yeah. And the government that is wielding the hammer on you, their spokespersons are also there, um, saying things that should not be said in public. So it goes both ways. So mm. when you hear the government talking about interim government, um, talking about insurrection, and today, like the ch uh, Minister of Information, far away in Washington D.C accused the Labour Party candidate of treason. You know, that word is being lightly used. Mm. Some would say that that is a precursor to the planned arrest of the Labour Party candidate. That, that is going on in, in, you know, in, in the streets. People are saying that. Whether it will eventually happen, we don't know. But APC, their critics will say that they are capable of doing anything. Right. Um, Prof, uh, in what circumstances is the right to freedom of speech and expression breached under the Nigerian constitution? And when, when does it have an arguable case? I mean, is it infinity as determined by the mood of the government in power as she has suggested? I think the definition of extreme uh, speech is largely subjective. And the subjectivity rests with uh, those in authority. Mm. They're the ones that will eventually define it. Otherwise, um, speeches are just speeches, you know. Um, pronouncements are just pronouncements, you know. Um, the depth or the weight of pronouncements is actually determined by how you respond to them. If you do not respond to them, you know, in accordance with what you suppose, um, the, in accordance with the weight you think is carrying, then of course it dissolves naturally mm -hmm. and it falls into um, one of the elements that helps in the building of social cohesion that helps in the building of a vibrant system, a robust system, you know, where exchanges help the development of ideas that can also lead to action. Mm -hmm. And that's what you expect in a democracy. In a democracy, I've made this point before Charles, you know, disabilities are, are differentiated. You know, people's voices are different. You know, passion um, of expressing nationalism or patriotism are also variegated. And of course, you know, when you look at patriotism and nationalism, they are measured by how people relate uh, to certain elements, certain structures, institutions within the system. If you are um, overly religious, people may say, okay, you are a fanatic. If you are over, over, overly ethnical, people may say you are an ethnic nationalist. Mm. You know, but if you subscribe to an idea in a way that you are passionate about it, then of course you could also see patriotism in a positive light, in a way that everybody would likely accept it. But if somebody is defining, defining it differently and seeing it as being too extreme, then it becomes problematic. Mm. That's where the subjective element comes in, and that's where we need to be careful. People are talking, yes, it's a democracy, and sometimes people talk out of passion, but we shouldn't misunderstand those passionate pronouncements as something uh, that is inimical to the system. After all, it because it's contributing directly or indirectly into the strengthening of the system because they are not bearing obvious they are not obviously bearing arms mm. you may say okay it might lead to people uh, getting into the street but of course that's a good I mean, point yeah it takes it yeah. takes time before these things just it mm. all we need to do is to monitor to keep tabs on developments enjoy the exchange and see it as part of uh, the process of deepening our democracy it just calls for tolerance mm. mutual understanding and of course leading to peace mm. and progress that's a good point. And, and it is about the right balance between the right to freedom of expression and the notional right to save, to safeguard the public from, you know, offensive material, etc. I'm, I'm sure you've been watching that unprecedented day in U.S. politics. Um, 
as Donald Trump became the first American president or former or serving to appear in court on criminal charges what lessons might there be in all of that for Nigeria and adherence to the rule of law comes immediately to mind a lot of lessons Charles um, watching that news uh, when it broke mm. um, it, it's like a dramatic and remarkable turn of events that a former president um, is charged to court on 34 counts of felon, fel felony charge, 34 felony, counts absolutely. of felony charges. Not misdemeanors. You know, yes, I mean yes. Th that is major, falsifying yeah. business records, mm -hmm. issues of tax evasions, and his net worth. Um, this is happening in a country that is highly advanced. It tells you that the judiciary is not in anybody's pocket. Judici the ju judiciary is independent, as it should be. Mm. The judiciary is alive. The judiciary is a place that you can place your confidence that if um, one does wrong, they will be righted in that place. Mm. I think that's a lesson. The other thing is that I don't know if he will be indicted, if he will go to jail, whatever happens. Well, if he'll be if, indicted. It's, it's well, if he goes he'll to be jail. Found guilty. Yeah, whether yeah. if he will be found guilty. Yeah. If, um, even if he is not found guilty, it's symbolic also. Mm. Um, a country is like a commonwealth where people decide that we're going to sign a social contract um, and have a conduct of a behavior and we will not accept brazen mismanagement Absolutely. or chronic mismanagement there are rules by which we should function so that everybody lives um, well in that common world mm. so if you do wrong in that common world if you decide that you're not going to do the right thing you will be told that you're, you're not above the law, whether you're a president or a governor or whoever. That is a very strong message, and I think that should also happen in Nigeria. We should get to a, a place where our common word means something. Our common word means that everybody has um, a confidence, a reliability mm. in that country. There's reliability. You know, everybody knows that we are equal. We are, we are equal, everything is fair and square, and it doesn't matter if I have money or I don't have. It's not a country f for just the rich. It's also a country for the middle class. It's also a country for um, the poor people. So um, hopefully in Nigeria, I don't know how long it will take to get there, but it's something that we should look up to, mm. that a country like ours is the place where the president cannot wake up and do anything that he wants without consequences. Not only the president, everybody else. Absolutely. That's a very good point. And we were looking there at live pictures just a hot second ago mm. of Donald Trump making his way. Those are the pictures again mm. through yeah. uh, New York. Uh, he's been on the road for a while mm. and with the little knowledge I have of New York I'm presuming that he's heading to the airport because if he was going to Trump Towers he would have got there mm. probably by, by now yeah. so it looks like he's going straight to the airport mm. to board his Boeing 757 and head back to so Florida. Florida but yeah. Prof this yeah. is really a watershed moment in US politics isn't it I mean some where um, America has never been before. Mm. Um, do you see Nigeria there anytime soon? If it's always the first time, Charles, once upon a time, begins every story. You know, it has never happened in America, um, even as a civilized frontline country, mm. but it's happening now. And of course, so many lessons to learn, like Constance has said, you know, we can never tell, you know, do not forget that we've also had flashes of uh, these in the past. Our problem is just sustainability. We have had instances where governors were sent to jail in this country. We have had instances where a senior president was being put in the dock, you know. Uh, but yeah, but there's always a sense that there is that it is politically motivated, although you well, could make the same argument yeah, the, in yeah, America. Yeah, Trump, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we'll get there at the yeah. appropriate time. We know what the law is. The law is something that, is, that should be definitive. Mm. And if it is definitive, if you look at the et etymology of law, it talks about something that is constant, you know. Uh, it doesn't shift. You know, it's a constant variable. Mm. Every, everything that Constance? happens... Const <laughs> <laughs> everything that happens around <laughs> it is 
<laughs> it's another shift, you know. Right. Which means that the law is on us. It should be respected by, by everybody. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, tall or short, yellow, black or white, you know. And that's how systems and societies move, you know. Mm. If systems and societies cannot move based on the whims and caprices of individuals, because those ones are fleet, you know, highly shifty. But the law is the constant element that moderates those um, systems. Absolutely. Be, yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself. We've got 30 seconds for you to wrap it all up, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Well, I think, um, like Aki Oshintoku said, a lot of what is happening is, is noise and possibly distraction. Every Nigerian is waiting for this case, you know, a momentous case, so that we can see whether, um, you know, the president-elect will be sworn in. And again, Hopefully, everything is concluded before May 29. That should be the goal, actually. Conclude all of these kind of uh, legal cases before the swearing-in. We'll have to watch and see. Dr. Constance Ikoku is an Arise News analyst, a journalist and political affairs commentator. And, of course, uh, Professor Abiodun Adeniyi is a current affairs analyst, professor of communications and deputy dean of the postgraduate school at Bayes University in Abuja. Thank you to you both. Very, very enlightening conversation. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja, as well as those in New York. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.